it. And then maybe the people, maybe some of the people that wanted to do this can uh, hop on and uh, we can go, you know, answer specific questions. But what, what they wanted to talk about, because, you know, you guys just took that quiz on the sum and difference of cubes. And overall, you guys did pretty well. But there were some questions, like about the one the, the, the one that was in the Google Forms. There were some questions. So I just wanted to kind of answer some of those things and, and answer any questions you guys have. So I'm going to turn on the document camera. Let's see. Let's see. Do you guys see the document camera now? Yeah. Yeah. Ah, okay, good, good. All right, so check this out. So just to, just to be sure, like, like that would be the, the difference, right? of cubes difference because subtraction cubes because they're two cubes right and then this would be sum of cubes and this would be a cubed plus b cubed so two cubes that are being added right two cubes that are being subtracted it's similar to like um you guys we did the difference of squares where that would be like something like 25x squared minus 16 or x squared minus 9, those are still factorable, right? Uh, these are these you can figure out. You don't need to know the formula. Like, like we have enough experience with distributing binomials that we can figure these out. Right, so this is the same, except kind of need the formula. And so I think you guys are all good with this part. Let's see. This is This is one of the first formulas I think I... Oh, there we go. Yeah, like that. So the way I always remember the formula is the difference as the negative here, right, and the positive there. So this one goes negative, positive, and this one goes the other way, positive, negative. Yeah. Okay, so, like, one of the trickiest things is, of course, like, if you had something like this, it's really easy, right? But the, prob the only problem is you have to figure out what A and B are to, to use this formula. Well, A is easy because it's X, right? So it's X. And B is not too bad because we all know that 2 cubed is 8. So then you just plug it in, right? And so we're, so so this is A and this is B. So everywhere you see an A, you're going to put X. Everywhere you see a B, you put 2. So that's not too bad. I think where you guys were getting into trouble, well, let me go ahead and do it anyway. So that's going to be x minus 2, x squared plus 2x plus 4. I think where we get into trouble is when we have, like, extra exponents and uh, additional exponents and and maybe something like, I don't know, let's say we had something like this, 27x to the, oh, I don't know. So any multiple of 3 would work. So we could do, we could do, like, 12 or something. I don't know. And then, and then um, minus, I don't know, you, you want to do minus or plus? You tell me. We'll let Leah pick. Uh, plus? All right, why not? There you go. Let's live a little, right? Okay, and so then let's say another cube would be 64. That's 4 cubed. Um, and let's say this was y to the 6th, right? So this one's tricky. Um, let's see if I can get that to focus better. This one's tricky because it's hard to identify what a, a and what a and b are. So typically, like if it was me and I was just doing this one, I would just I could do this from here to here in my head. I wouldn't need to write out this part. But for this one, I probably would be careful and make sure I would understand that this is going to be three x to the fourth. And the reason it's 3x to the 4th is because if you take 3x to the 4th and you cube it, you get 27x to the 12th. And b is going to be 4y squared because 4y squared cubed is going to be 64y to the 6th. So then we just have to use this formula up here, right? So it's going to be 3x to the 4th plus 4y squared. And then... Um, a squared, so it's this whole thing squared, right? So it's going to be it's going to be three x to the fourth squared, which is going to be 
nine X to the eighth. That to me, like I see a lot of mistakes there. I make a lot of mistakes there. The thing is, I sometimes forget to square the coefficient. Okay, and then minus, then you got to multiply these two together. So three times four is 12 x to the fourth y squared, and then plus this squared. So that's going to be 16 y to the fourth. Yeah. So I don't know. When it all goes smooth, of course, it looks easy. But the hard part to me, like the most difficult part about this, is going from seeing these two and recognizing that they're both cubes and then recognizing what is cubed. So like this, this right here, this is the hard part. I didn't write it out when I talked to you guys about it. But this is the hard part to me, is, is seeing that these two things are the same. That's the trickiest part. How are you guys doing with that? Pretty good? So if the, if the coefficient isn't, uh, isn't cubed, then none of it is cubed? So like this right here, for example, yeah. um, that. No, it's not a difference of cubes. Like now it is. Like if I cover up the five, right? That's a difference of cubes. Yeah. But this, uh, this is not, because that's not a cube number. Yeah. Oh, okay. Yeah, it's like confusing in the quiz. Yeah, yeah. Um, some of those things I leave. So oh, hey, Paula's here too. Good morning, Paula. How are you? I don't. Paula doesn't have a microphone. I don't think she always she always types her messages. Um. So, uh, Ruben, let's see. I get distracted. <laughs> that never happens to me, right? But uh, yeah. So, on the quizzes and sometimes in the notes, there's little Easter eggs, and those are those are things I put in there that are either like going to connect to something that's that's coming. So it would be like an application that, that, that you haven't learned yet, or um, it's like something that's confusing you, but it's kind of there to, to make you think and to get you to, to, to check your own work. So sometimes I do it on accident, which I made a bunch of them with this with the homework assignment on this one, but sometimes I do them on purpose. I usually do them on purpose. And that's one way, especially... I, I don't know. I think it's good because if everything's always perfect, like you see from here to here, then sometimes you don't, your challenge, you're not, your, your thinking's not challenged. And uh, it's easy to fool yourself into thinking that you understand when you might be a little confused. Yeah. All right. Oh, hey, Zeus left and hey, Zeus is back. So do you guys want to go over another one or you think you're good? You tell me. I'm, I'm good with whatever you guys want to do. Or if you want, you can make one up for me and I'll try it. Oh, that would be kind of cool. Let me see. Let's see if I can find a, I just did a Google search, right? For a difference of cubes. Um, oh, that's weird. Oh, that's interesting. So check this out. Here's, here's a, this is, this is something I hadn't thought of. Check this out, Ruben. So this is one that's interesting. This is interesting. So here's the problem. I just did a Google search for difference of cubes examples, and it gave me this. This is one of the things that came up. And that's not a difference of cubes, right? Because 2 isn't a cube number. But check this out. You can take a 2 out of both of those terms. And when you take a 2 out of 128, you're left with 64. And now you do have a difference of cubes. So you're going to have oh, another thing. Um, if you put this in descending order, like, like alphabetical order, it's usually going to keep you out of trouble. Like you won't make as many mistakes if you're in that habit. So, yeah, that's a, that's a pretty interesting example. It's not one I would have um, thought of. Yeah, so that, that's that what... On like the five one, I thought you did that, but only with the five. So that's what. Oh uh, yeah. If you could have taken five out of both terms, you would have been good to go. I it's see. I found you, go ahead. It's only if you can take the five out of both of them, not just one. 
Correct. So if you can take it out of both factors, I mean, sorry, if you can take that out of both terms and then you're left with a cube and another cube, then you can, you'll have either the sum or the difference of cubes. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. That makes sense. Thank you. You're welcome. What if you were like, go ahead, Leah. <laughs> oh, so what if it was like a different number that you can take out from both of them instead of the actual coefficient? Is that possible? Uh, yeah, yeah. So let me let me think of an example. So let's say we had um, let's say we had twenty four x to the sixth plus um, no minus three y cubed, right? So not a cube. Well, this part's a cube, and this part's a cube, right? This is x squared cubed. This is y cubed, right? Uh, but here. These coefficients aren't cubes, but three comes out of both, and you're left with 8x cubed minus y cubed, you see? And so, yeah, that can work. That's a good question. See, this is the stuff that we never, man, this is why learning distance-wise is, like, in a virtual classroom is difficult, because these things come out, like, so natural and quick when we're, like, together in class, but, oh, well, I guess I'll have to oh wait wait sorry i rewrote this wrong did you see what i did uh so this is going to be um squared that's going to be four but so like these kinds of questions they come out so naturally like during class and uh oops and we're so the reason i started struggling i started saying one thing and i i should have i should have done this right here i should have said that's 2x squared cubed minus y cubed. And that would have helped me stay out of trouble. But but the the questions like that, th that's where we really start to learn. And, and, and it's difficult to figure out how to best facilitate that kind of questioning. So that's an excellent question that both of you guys had. You see how, Ruben, you see, you see how your simple question uh, led us to some other things? And... And so, like, a simple question can sometimes uncover some pretty complicated stuff, and that's kind of cool. All right, I see another example. Uh, just, look, like I said, just did a, an image search on Google. This one's weird. Um, let's see, plus 27. Oh, man, that's, na that's nasty. That's not very nice at all. But... It is a sum of cubes because check this out. This part right here is a. So a is going to be five minus x, and b is going to be three. Do you see? That's kind of tricky. So like, let's let's go ahead because this one's ugly. What I want to do is I want to write my formula out carefully. Do you see what I mean? So, like, if it's a simple one, like the first example we did, I don't usually write the formula out. But when it's something that's kind of complicated or ugly, it's a really good idea to write everything out and just take your time. And that, that will hopefully prevent you from making silly mistakes. All right, so on this one, um, that's, that's, the, that's 5 minus x and then plus 3, right? And we're going to have to simplify that. We can, we can clean that up. And then this one is going to be uh, 5 minus x squared minus 5 minus x times 3 plus 9. So we can clean this up a little bit. This is going to be, I'm going to, I'm going to put it this way. I'm going to go, uh, that's 8 minus x. You guys okay with that? This, you know, 5 plus 3, famously known as 8. <laughs> and then... Uh, this is going to be 25 minus 10x plus x squared. That's all mixed up and out of order. Uh, this is going to be minus 15x, 15. And then, okay, so check this out. Be careful right here. You see how it's minus? That's why that one's minus, right? But then that negative times this, that's going to be a plus 3x and then plus 9. You guys good with that? That sign error right there, I would be willing to bet, like if we were in class and I gave you a quiz or just a practice problem that you had to do independently, I would be willing to bet that um, almost, 
I would say I would say probably ninety percent of students would have a sign error right there. I'd be willing to bet that 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 would that would be a mistake. In fact, if I weren't being careful, I know I would have made that mistake. So let's see, eight minus x. We're going to keep that one good, and then let's simplify. Let's simplify this. Put it all in descending order. So we have an x squared. That's good. Uh, let's see. So we have a negative ten and a plus three makes negative seven. Good. And then 25, 15, and 9. So that makes 19, I think, right? Because these two make 10, right? And then 19 to plus 19. That's what I got. Oh, I should look. Let me look back. Oh, hey, that's what the Internet got. The Internet said it's true, so it's got to be true, right? <laughs> I, think Abe Lincoln, I think Abe Lincoln said that. If it's on the Internet, it's true. How you guys doing? Good, bad, what? It seems so messy, like doing all of this. It it is messy. There's so like, with in fact, do you remember when you first when you went from doing linear linear equations to quadratic equations? Those quadratics probably seemed like massive and overwhelming and like super super ugly, right? Um. And then so so then so when you switched when you switched from from doing linear stuff, which is all kind of neat to doing those quadratics, especially like completing the square and then using the quadratic formula, it probably looked awful. Well, now we're making the next jump from quadratics up into, uh, you know, higher order polynomials, higher degree polynomials. And so, yeah, it's going to look, it's going to look uglier. And, uh, and then we're going to get into rational stuff and then logarithms and exponential functions. And as long as you understand each part, then it's it, it can be kind of clear. So like, for example, let me turn the document camera back on. So for example, once it starts. So for example, if you understand what we're doing right here, then you're probably okay with where this came from. And then if you understand where this came from, then you get this. You know what I mean? So if you did it, like I understand if I watched somebody else do this, it would be like, oh, my God, that's too much. But I think you guys can do this problem. And when you do, then all of this is going to be kind of familiar. It won't be too bad. Yeah. But I, I understand your I, – I, I feel your pain. I, I found another one I think we should maybe do. It's another really, really tricky one, okay? Um So 4x cubed y minus 500y. All right. Mm. If it was me and I didn't have a context or clue that we were dealing with difference in some or sum of cubes, I wouldn't, I wouldn't even recognize it. But if you look, um, you can take a 4 and a y out of both. First one's easy. Let's see, 4 goes into 500. Oh, man. Let's see, let's do our old-fashioned. I'm too tired to... Oh, look at that. 100, that's 25, right? Here's the thing. If you're doing an assignment and it's a difference of cubes or sum of cubes, they're written to be factorable. So, you know, all but one or two are definitely going to be factorable. And so... You just kind of have to go with it until you see how it works. So now this one's not bad, right? That's x cubed, right? And this is 5 cubed. So it's going to be 4y and then x minus 5, x squared plus 5x plus 25. Yeah. The hard part was just getting it started. Let's see. Maybe I can find one more. I don't know. I thought the one that, Ruben, that you said looked really confusing and ugly I think that was the hardest one we're going to see. And I found that. It looks like, so the place I found it, it looks like, uh, oh, it's a, it's a, it looks like it's a somebody's blog and they just find difficult or ugly math problems and do them. It's just examples of math problems. Huh, that's weird. Yeah. All right. I don't see any more that are significantly different than what we tried. Let's see. Yeah, I think we're good. 
All right. Let's see here. There we go. <clears throat> so I'm good if you guys are good. You guys, how do you feel about this topic in general? Like I saw how you did on your quiz. Let me check the average again. While I look that up, you can just you can type it in the chat room or you can just tell me. Uh, factoring some of the difference of cubes. Oh, wrong one, wrong one. So let me find it. Maybe I can do if I can do this at, like without showing you guys individual scores. Then maybe uh, we can kind of look at some tenden some um, tendencies and some common mistakes. Yeah, here we go. Responses. I think we can. Oh yeah. Okay. Yeah, let's do that. Uh, here we go. So let's let's review our quiz. I can do this with you guys without showing you guys uh, individual scores. Uh, can you guys see that? Should be able to. Yeah. Okay, cool. So let's see. First one. Um, looks like most people said neither. One person said difference of cubes. Oh, it doesn't show us the picture. Well, that's stupid. Is the picture below? <laughs> well, that does. That's not a very good review at all, is it? Unless, um, hold on. We might have to do a. We might have to do a split screen. Hold on. I know how to do this. I got. I got a plan. We'll do a split screen. So here's the first question, and we'll make make it uh, all skinny. And then, and then I'll put the responses there too. And see, old people can learn technology. All right. Okay, so first one. Uh, so, Ruben, exactly like you were saying, right? So this is neither because of the five, right? Five is not a perfect cube, and you can't factor it out to make it a perfect cube. So that's why that one's good. Uh, looks yeah. like everybody got this one. Difference of cubes, good. Uh, let's see, this one. You know, I wish Google Forms would let us number these. Like, maybe there's a way, but I, I don't know how. I'll have to look. Maybe I'll just have to manually number each one. So is the binomial picture below the sum or difference of cubes? And so it's the sum of cubes. Almost everybody got it right. And it is a sum of cubes because each of these exponents is a multiple of three. And the reason that for exponents it's cubed if it's a multiple of three is because when you raise a power to a power, you multiply. Yeah. So it's true. 15 is not a cube number. Neither is six or nine or three, but they're all multiples of three. All right, let's see. 100% of people got that one right. That's good. And section three. Uh, what are A and B for this one? Looks like almost everybody got it right. Oh, I see. Somebody said, oh, it's just A. Somebody said seven. Two people did, but it's 7x squared. Okay. That's interesting. So one benefit of having a quiz like this um, on Google Forms, is it gives gives uh, gives me a way to see more accurately how like more accurately like trends and things that are common. So when I grade them, I have a sense of it, and I and I do pretty okay with that. But this is kind of cool. So only one person got this wrong. What's the value of b? It's not twenty seven. It's three. So yeah, you guys are killing that. That's good. Uh, good. Almost everybody got this one right. It says, what's the value of A? So A is going to be 4x squared for sure. Has to be 4x squared. All right. Hey, you guys, you guys did really good on this quiz, I think. Yeah. So factor completely. All you got to do is pick the right one. And this is the right formula right there. 
Yeah, same there. So you guys, oh, actually, yeah, you guys are killing this thing. Huh. Man, I'm impressed. You guys are smart. And you learned all that, like, distance learning. Increíble. <laughs> yeah. All right. Well, how's everybody doing? That uh, Like, yesterday, you guys started talking about that UFO thing. Man, that thing's freaky. That was freaky. I have a question. It's maculated, but it's not this. Okay. So what's the it's standard deviation? I don't know. It's about standard deviation. So standard deviation is like when you have so do you know how you can find like you have a set of data and you can find the average or the mean? Yeah. So standard deviation kind of describes how close um like how accurate the average is. Cause sometimes an average can be really far off. Like let's say, let's say you have 10 people, right? And let's say it's on a scale of one to a hundred for a score. So you have 10 scores, right? So let's yeah. say nine of your scores are, are um, say a, a 25 out of a hundred, but you got, you got one that's a hundred out of a hundred. So that, that's good. Yeah. Or like, let's say you have, let's say almost everybody has a B average, but then you have two zeros. It's really going to throw the data off. And so um, standard deviation gives you a way. It's a numerical analysis of comparing like the median and the mean. And it, it compares, it compares those to show you how accurate or yeah, how accurate the average really is in describing what is most common. Does that so make sense? Like the thing that confuses me is, is like, you have a mean of like, let's say 20, and then huh? a standard deviation of 5.1. How yeah. does that, I don't like, I don't understand the relationship between them, the two of them. So a standard deviation, let me, let me make sure I don't mess this up. Um, so a standard deviation, so the average was 20, right? And yeah. a standard deviation of 5.1, um, I think that's a pretty high standard deviation. And is that a bad thing or a good thing? Well, it's just, it's neither. Um, what, what a good or bad, hold on, let's see. Yeah, like even saying good or bad is, um, it's, it's like subjective because it just means it's just what it is, right? So if you have a high, if you have a standard deviation of like, like five, then that, that means you're like five, like people are mostly going to be between five and five points, one side or another, other of that, of that average. So it's like that plus or minus thing. Kind of. Yeah. Um, let's see. Yeah. So yeah, standard, so that's what that's standard deviation just kind of describes how how tightly compacted the data is. Like there's we man, there's this stuff. Hold on, let me see if I can find a picture. There, there's this thing called a, a a bell curve and like most data conforms to a bell curve and with a bell curve most of the um most of the data is should be within like a certain a certain area and 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 that would be good like reliable data and and so the standard deviation so here let me let me let me put this over here and see if i can show you i'm not real statistics i never took a statistics class so i mean i did do some standard deviation stuff in calculus and probability but that was like 20 years ago so i don't really i'm not i'm not as uh well versed in it as i really should be so i, I have some of the concept but some of the specifics i'll mess up so standard deviation do you see like if you were to graph the the information like your data um the standard deviation would like this would be the average this, this is the middle right here this should be the average the standard deviation shows you kind of how steep or how flat this curve is and um, there's a thing, it, it, should be, it should be normal, which means like predictable. And most of the data should be like in the middle. 
I don't know. It's kind of a it's kind of a hard thing because we're talking about area under a curve, which is a calculus concept. I don't know. So, so like, maybe the like best, the, best. Go ahead. So then, like the further out of the center it is, the higher the standard uh -huh. deviation is. Correct. Right. So the flatter this is, and the more stuff that's like the higher, the higher the curve is on the sides, the worse the standard deviation, or the worse the higher the standard deviation. Yeah. So then well, a standard well, deviation of one point one, I mean a standard <laughs> deviation of one point six is better than the standard deviation of five point one. Yeah, it's low, it's closer, yes. So that means that, that the so deviation is, is like deviation is a change, like a uh, like to deviate from a course means you you go off of course, right? So when we're talking about standard deviation, we're talking about the average Di the average difference between the individual pieces of data and the and the mean of all of the data. Yeah. So like we, might, we might have a class average of a quiz. On a quiz, we might have a class average of a 75, right? Um, but if we had a high standard deviation, that means that, that, that means that's actually, that would be a, an indication that people don't understand as well as they should. And um, so like, hold on. Oh, that's weird. With my Facebook. So then, um, hold on, there we go. So if you had a high standard deviation, that's kind of like, well, here, I got an example. So you know how like in class when we're learning something new and uh, I'll ask everybody to do a problem on their own and I'll just go around and ask for answers. If most people have like the same answer, whether it's right or wrong, that's good because everybody's kind of thinking along the same lines and we can adjust. So like if everybody's wrong, but in the same way, then I know what to do next. If everybody's right, I know what to do next. But if I ask six people and I get four different answers, then we have a problem because not everybody's sense of the information in the same way. So everybody's kind of all over the place. And that would be an example of a high standard deviation. Why are you asking about standard deviation, Ruben? It's because, like, for engineering, we're doing, like, statistics and stuff. And it's easy, like, to calculate it, but, like, I didn't understand what it meant. Yeah, yeah. So a high standard deviation in, a, in a, like, a manufacturing is, like, it's actually super important. Even if you're selling, like, a bag of chips, right? So weights and measures says... Like, if you label that it's 16 ounces, that it has to be 16 ounces, right? But they don't actually measure every single bag at the manufacturer. They have a machine that will that'll weigh it out within a margin of error. And so that standard deviation is kind of like a margin of error. So, like, if we had a, if we had a class average of, of 75% and we had a standard deviation of 2, that means most people would be between 73 and 77%. Like, if the standard deviation was actually 2%. Oh, okay, yeah. Yeah, so like if you were building, um, I don't know, like a, like a bolt, and it has a bolt head that you have to have a wrench to turn, um, you want it to be as, like, you want it to be as, as accurate as possible, so you want a really low standard deviation. But if you're going to buy, so like if you buy high-quality stuff, the tolerances are very low. That means the standard deviation is very low. But if you buy cheap stuff, the standards, like, it's really inconsistent. And then the averages would be, the standard deviations would be very high because it's inconsistent data. That's why it's not good or bad, it just is. Like in some situations, you want a very high standard, a very low standard deviation because you want everything to be as uniform as possible. Engineering, that's probably definitely the case. <laughs> uh, genetics, no. <laughs> you want highly diversified <laughs> genetic pop yard, genetic pool, you see what I mean now? That's why it's hard to say what's good and bad about standard deviation. It's just information. So it's all about the context. Okay. <laughs> I get it now. Thank you. Yeah. Yeah, you're welcome. All right. Any anything else? How you, you guys doing all okay? What's on tap for lunch today, Jesus? Oh, I don't know. Cereal, I guess. Oh. For lunch? What kind? <laughs> I don't know. 
Uh, all right. Now cereal, actually. Oh, that's what I had for breakfast. Cinnamon life. Oh, man. All right. Uh, oh, dude. Uh, I made lobster the other day. Lobster and a salmon. And the lobster was the bomb because I cooked it in like this. this uh, I, I grilled it, so it, like seared it. So it was like crispy on the outside just real quick. And then like turn it over. And, and I'd already pulled the meat out of the shell and laid it back in. So when I put like this herb butter on top, it was actually like, like a seasoned butter. It like all went underneath and it was like boiled in butter. It was good. You should be jealous, Leah. Yeah. All right. Well, um, so I'm going to post this in Google Classroom. And so if you guys have another question, you didn't, you weren't here right now when we recorded it, you can always ask. And uh, I'll help you guys out. And I was glad to be able to get on today because... I do have a bunch of meetings and this my first my my the meeting I just left ended early. So that was kind of cool. And uh yeah. All right guys. Well, I'm gonna go eat lunch. And I don't know what I'm gonna have. It might be I might make some macaroni and cheese out of a box. But um yeah. All right guys. Uh hope you have a great day. And if you guys have trouble on oh the topic we're doing right now is actually pretty complicated where we're gonna be solving uh, trinomials that are in quadratic form. It's kind of weird when you do the substitution. So be patient with yourself on that and and we'll, we'll I don't know, try it and then we'll, we'll go over it tomorrow and then you can take your quiz on Friday and see how you guys do. Did any of you guys try that already or start it? No, not yet. Not yet. Not yet. Oh, and yeah, that see, yeah, nobody's turning it. That one's that one's tricky. Um, it's it's like tricky until you see it and then you get it, and then once you get it, it's like so easy and obvious. But it's totally it's totally a new application of a simple idea, and so it almost feels like you're cheating. But what you're doing is mathematically solid. You're just just replacing something that's equivalent with something else. So like. For example, um, like if 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 you knew if you knew that I don't know four quarts equals a gallon, and you can't you can't actually measure a gallon directly, but you can measure four quarts instead. You can do that, and that's kind of like the idea of what we're doing in this in this topic because um, you can't use a quadratic formula for things that aren't quadratic but you can rewrite those things to make them quadratic. You can kind of like translate it and then you figure out what the answers are and then you translate it back and then you recalculate it again. It's weird, but you'll see, you guys will get it. We'll, we'll be patient. And if it takes longer and Friday's too soon and you're not ready for the quiz by Friday, then we'll postpone it to Monday as long as, as long as we're postponing it because it's still confusing, not just because you didn't do it. <laughs> Makes sense? Yeah. All right, guys. Um, I'm gonna go eat lunch. I'll talk to you guys later. Have a good after have a good afternoon. Have a nice day, Mr. Brown. Thank you. You too. All right. Bye, guys. Stop recording at first, and I'll hang up. There we go.